Okay, in today's setup guide, we are checking out the very final release of Project 64 Legacy Emulator for Windows PC. So, like I say, this is literally the final release of this emulator. The developers have done everything possible and they've set out what they want to do. So, in this setup guide, I'm going to be showing you how to use this emulator. How to pop your games into the GUI, how to configure or map your controllers. I'm also going to go through different video plugin settings as well as audio settings and just general this and that of getting you the best experience with Project 64 Legacy. So check this one out. Before I start today's Project 64 Legacy Setup Guide for Windows PC, if you like what you see today, hit the notifications, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation setup guides like this one today. Also helps my channel out a lot, plus you get notified each time I release a new setup guide. So I've covered a few different emulators for the Nintendo 64 in the past year, such as Rosalie's, Project 64 itself. And a couple of others so let's just get one thing clear project 64 legacy is totally separate from project 64 however this one actually promises to be compatible with a hundred percent pretty much of your n64 games so we're just going to head over to the project 64 legacy website and we can download it from here we just go to the downloads tab and if we just go to project 64 1.6.3 final it's going to lead us to a github page if we just click on here just scroll down the one that we want is dot zip just here which as says three days ago this was released and this is literally the final build of project 64 legacy so I've already downloaded this and once you've downloaded it, you're going to end up with a zip folder. What I'm going to do is create a new folder on my desktop. So I'm going to right click, just go down to new folder and I'm going to just call this N64. Entirely up to you how you name this folder. But what we're going to do is just drag in our zip folder we just downloaded and just extract it inside of here. So right click on it. I'm using WinRAR. You might be using a different extraction tool and I'm gonna extract it right just here. Here we go. So everything's now been extracted and we can delete that zip folder. So just delete that one. And just to make things a little bit more tidy, I've got some N64 games in a games folder. I'm gonna just drag that inside of there too. Okay, so Project 64 Legacy supports .z64 or .z64 files. It also supports zip folders too, as long as it's got your .z64 inside. So what we're gonna do is actually open up Project 64 Legacy. So if we double left click on this executable file, here we go, so right now it's blank. We don't see any games. What we need to do is just go to file, choose ROM directory, and what we need to do with this is actually link it to where your games are located. So my games are in that games folder I've just put into my N64 folder. So I need to look for desktop because that's where it's located. N64, and here's my games, and okay. And here's my games, so excellent stuff. So if I just expand this, what we're gonna do first of all is just boot up a game just to make sure everything is working okay. So I'm gonna choose Super Mario 64. Okay, so the game's working fine, and of course I've just entered into full screen mode by pressing Alt and Enter on my keyboards, but we can actually let this do it automatically. But first of all, we need to sort out the controller configuration. So to do this, what I'm going to do is go to Options at the top, I'm going to go to Configure Controller Plugin, and from here, I'm going to leave Plugged checked. And what I'm going to do is just start mapping out my controller. So I've got a Google Stadia controller plugged in, we're going to start off with digital pads, so if I just left click on the up button just there and then correspond that with my D-pad and we're just going to go through each one of these one by one 
And of course, the N64 controller had some really weird buttons on it. Uh, I think that was pretty known at the time for its really bizarre control layout. And just remember that C buttons are your yellow buttons on the N64 controller. Okay, we can also map out here the analog stick, which is of course in the middle of the N64 controller. So for this, I'm going to just use my left analog stick. Okay, next thing I'll suggest doing then is actually go to save the profile. If you happen to lose your mappings, then we can actually load them back in. So we just give this a name. I'm going to call it just Jamie. And just make sure that file is saved into your N64 folder just so it's easier to find. If I go to save, and I then go to save here. Okie dokie. Okay, we also got the ability through Project 64 Legacy to apply cheats, and we can do this really easily. If I just go to System, Cheats, and this is going to bring up the cheats for this particular game. So for example, if I just go and check Don't Hurt Mario, and if I just close out of this... Let's go! <laughs> And as you can see just there, that cheat is now been applied. And we can apply as many cheats as we want just by going to System, Cheats. Okay, so what we're going to do next is take a look at saving and loading your game. So, of course, Project 64 Legacy is going to act like it's a real N64. But we can actually save this manually as well. So, if we go up to System and I go to Save. And if I go back into the game again... <laughs> And I'm going to now go to load up my save. So again, if I go to system and I then go down to restore. Very easily, we can apply more saves. So for example, if I go back to system and I go down to current save state, this is actually in slot three. If I use slot one, and then I save it from where I am right here. System and resume. And I'm going to load up that save state once again. So system. And just make sure that slot one is selected. And if I then go to restore. Okay, so let's take a look at actually booting your games up direct into full screen mode. So to do this, we're going to go to Options, Settings. Now we've got various different video plugins for Project 64 Legacy. I find most of the time the default plugin works just fine, but you've got others here to choose from. But using this plugin, I'm going to go to Option, and I'm going to go to On Loading a ROM, go to full screen. If I check this and OK, Okay, with that enabled, I'm going to open up one of my games. And here we go, straight into full screen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
And just remember to leave full screen, just alt and enter on your keyboard. So of course, just like Mario 64, we've also got cheats here. So system, cheats, and we can enable all levels or infinite. Now just remember to use cheats that your game does have to be loaded. And if we go back to options, if you get any issues with sounds, then go down to configure audio plugin, output device, and you can change your output device just there or your backend sound driver. But everything for me works just fine with default. We've also got advanced just here. So should you get any issues with sound output, then you've got plenty of options here to help you with that. Now, if we go to options again, and this time configure graphics plugin, we can enable VSync. So what VSync is going to do is take away screen tear. And this is going to be more obvious in your 3D games, games such as Ridge Racer, for example. So it's always worth enabling VSync. We've also got 16 by 9 widescreen. Some games are going to look good, some aren't so. But if we select that, apply, and OK. Okay, like I said, we've also got various different video plugins, so if a game doesn't work, it's always worth checking out a different plugin. So, for example, if I go to Options and down to Settings, I can change this over to something such as a bottom one just here. And I've also got the ability here to change audio plugins too. And if I go to OK... Hello! So as you can see, by changing video plugins, it might work fine on some games, other games it might not work good at all. But by default, if you find a game is struggling, then it's always worth checking out your video. But like I say just now, really, for me, it's best using the default. And if we go to options and we go down to configure graphics plugin, if you find games are displaying a black screen, for example, it's also worth checking out render mode. So by default, this is OpenGL. If I just drop this to DirectX 8, and various different plugins that come to Project 64 Legacy, it's got different video options. So for example, if I go back to options, settings, and I change video plugin to something like this one just here. I OK. And if I then go to options in graphics plugin, we're going to find this particular plugin has a range just here of different video settings. So anastrophic filtering, I can boost this up. Full scene anti-aliasing, I can also turn that up. And I've also got filters just here I could play around with. But just remember to press apply and OK. And that's it for today's Project 64 Legacy Setup Guide. So yes, a lot of information in this setup guide today, but hopefully I've got you using it correctly, including applying your own cheats and mapping out your very own controllers. So anyways, if you liked today's video, hit notifications, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation setup guides like this one you've watched today. Also, join me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. But until next time, stay retro.